Hi, this is Digital Beers Born. Welcome back for more AP Art History. We finished our chapter on the Indigenous American art, and we have two more pieces that I'd like to cover before the AP exam. They're both examples of prehistoric art that we haven't covered yet. Both of the works we're going to look at come from the Pacific Islands. Now, the Pacific Island chapter is not included in this year's AP exam, but prehistoric art is. So with that in mind, I think it's important to cover these last two works of art just in case they come up on the exam. So let's take a look at our last two final pieces of prehistoric art. Now, as we discussed earlier in the year, prehistoric means that it predates written language. Because of that, we know little about the contextual information for these works, so they should be pretty quick. We're going to take a look at pieces that come from here, the Pacific Islands, starting with this, an object known as the Ambum Stone. Now, more specifically within the Pacific Islands, this piece comes from Papua New Guinea. Let's start with the content. The subject matter of this work is that it depicts a little creature. This is an anteater, or more specifically, an echidna. An echidna is a type of anteater that looks like this. It's a cute little guy. You can see the long nose and the round body. More specifically, the belief is that this depicts a baby echidna. When they're newborn, echidnas look like this. Look at this round little creature. And you can see the similarities between the ambum stone and a newborn baby echidna or anteater. These animals were an important part of life for early people on Papua New Guinea. Uh, these animals were hunted for food. They have a high fat content, um, kind of like a pig almost. And since there were no pigs on the island, whereas other parts of the world might rely on a pig as a livestock, the people of Papua New Guinea relied on echidnas or anteaters. Now let's talk about the formal qualities. This object is made out of stone, specifically a type of stone known as gray whack. Uh, gray whack is a very hard, durable stone, um, which would make it difficult to sculpt. So we know that this was probably an important object. The stone was carved out of the center to create the shape of the head curving around the body. The bottom of the sculpture is rounded. All of this ties into the function of this object. This sculpture is purposeful. It's a, it's a mortar, um, part of a set of objects known as a mortar and pestle. If you are not familiar with a mortar and pestle, it's the kind of thing that's used to grind up food. Uh, you'll oftentimes see it used to make, um, to make guacamole today. But indigenous people and ancient and prehistoric populations would use a mortar and pestle to grind up nuts or seeds or grains to make them into a fine powder that was more usable for cooking. This object is a pestle. It's the thing that they would hold to grind up nuts or seeds or other kinds of foods as part of a cooking process. That's why it was important to use gray wax so that it would be hard enough to not break in its use. It's also why it's sculpted in the shape that it is. By having this negative space, this hole in the center, it'll allow the user to wrap their hand around this portion to get a good grip to use it as a pestle. Now let's talk about the context. As I mentioned, because this is prehistoric, we don't have much contextual information. We don't know who made it. We don't know the religion or politics of the population. All we really know is the original location. 
And what it shows us is that population spread out of Asia into places like Papua New Guinea. We see a population's boom across the Pacific Islands. We also know the rough date range of this. And the reason for that is because um, in the 20th century, this stone was actually given to a museum in France temporarily so they could exhibit it. While this French museum had it, they accidentally dropped it and they broke it in half which is a terrible thing, but it ended up being kind of fortuitous because there was a piece of plant fiber, a small piece of plant that had grown into a crack. And when the ambem stone broke, it revealed that small piece of plant fiber. The reason why that's important is because it allowed scientists to radiocarbon date the object. If you remember in our previous works, we talked about radiocarbon dating. It's a way of dating an object, but only using materials that were at one point alive. You can't radiocarbon date stone, but you can radiocarbon date plant material. So because they found that little piece of plant material inside that crack when it was broken, it allowed them to date this at roughly 1500 BCE, which shows us the population movement across the world as they started to populate islands in the Pacific. And that is the Ambum Stone, a prehistoric Pacific Island art object.